I'm Jeroen Makmach. I'm the lead systems engineer for IoT and embedded compute for EMEA within uh, Dell Technologies. Uh, Dell Technologies is consisting of uh, these seven uh, companies that you see here. Um, the talk this morning is about uh, Agix Foundry. Um, you see the octopus there. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit more about what the octopus is all about. Um, Edgex Foundry is part of the LF Edge uh, Linux Foundation uh, Edge Initiative. Um, so I've got 25 years of uh, embedded experience uh, and I recently uh, one half year joined uh, Dell Technologies. So let me go over the uh, agenda. Um, a quick history, uh, some backgrounds on Edgex, where it's coming from, where are we going? The architecture and the technologies uh, used uh, inside the Agix uh, Foundry. Um, the current status, um, how the ecosystem is set up, some of the governance uh, that's uh, used and uh, some of the releases. I'm going to di dive into uh, some of the roadmap. Um, got some people here that, uh, that are actively working on, uh, on this as well. So. Um, some uh, use cases and some of the hackathons that we've been uh, having uh, this year. Uh, also, we're planning on doing next year. Um, and some new initiatives which have been recently announced uh, this Monday, uh, going over Project Alvarium, and I'm going to explain what, uh, what that's all about. So, why is IoT difficult? Uh, basically, IoT is difficult because it's, it's the um, the postdoctorate of everything that we've been doing for the last 35 or 40 years in, in IT. You have network protocols, uh, mobile computing, cloud compute, uh, AI, machine learning. Uh, you need to know it all, and that's, uh, that's why it's hard. And how do you choose? Because um, you need domain expertise in, in analytics, data usage, um, security, um, but also, how do you handle the connectivity soup of all these different industrial protocols that are out there? Right? Um, then there's the application environments. We're going to use C, C++, Python, .NET. Um, and how about operating systems? So you need to have a lot of choices. And essentially, what you want is freedom there uh, to choose whatever you want, but still have uh, have support in, uh, in your ecosystem that you're working on. Now, Edgex is, uh, is the answer to that. It's, uh, it's open source, vendor neutral projects. It's more like an ecosystem of uh, uh, work. Um, it's based around microservices and, and a loosely coupled framework uh, for IoT and edge computing. It's hardware and OS agnostic. Um, and it's a Linux Foundation Apache 2 project. So basically, it uh, helps to, uh, to yeah, have a common building blocks and APIs uh, to build uh, on an IoT platform, rather than having a, a siloed IoT platform, uh, which is not adaptable in a, in a greater picture. So if you want to do this at scale, you need to, uh, to look at uh, Azix Foundry. So the overall goals is to unify edge computing and have an open platform for people to add value into that uh, platform. Um, have an ecosystem where everybody uh, creates plug and play components that uh, can be certified in order to work together uh, in this uh, ecosystem uh, and provide tools uh, to, to actually faster get your products uh, to market. Um, and work together on, on all of these open source uh, projects uh, and, and ultimately enable and encourage the growth of uh, IoT uh, solutions. So a brief history of uh, where, where we're coming from. It, it all started in 2015 where it started as an, uh, a CTO incubation uh, project, uh, Project Fuse, uh, done by my CTO, uh, Jason Shepard, where I uh, uh, report into. Um, Dell invested seven man years in that initial uh, project uh, and gave about 125,000 uh, lines of code uh, as a start of this, uh, this project. 
uh, was mainly sponsored also by Jim White, who was uh, sort of the brains behind uh, all of this. Um, it ended op in open source uh, in uh, April 2017 um, with 50 members, and it now grew up to about 76 members, uh, and it's part of the LF Edge uh, since January 2019. So we have a cadence of, uh, of two releases a year, at least that's what we're trying to do, uh, and we've been pretty successful uh, up till now. So here you see the, uh, the actual framework uh, in the flash, right? In the bottom side, you see all of the, uh, the device services. Basically, you're interfacing to the outside world. Um, so we have a good set of, uh, of, of protocols, and we have actually have a lot of uh, people uh, creating their own uh, device drivers. For instance, I'm working with a sensor manufacturing in Germany that creates uh, their uh, device drivers for all their sensors that they have in their portfolio. So that's, that's really good because that, uh, that gives uh, a lot of stickiness to, uh, to uh, this project. And I, yeah, if more people could do that, that, that would be great. So then we have sort of a core services uh, in there where uh, all of these uh, information is uh, traveling through. Uh, then we have some uh, support services uh, on top of that uh, with your scheduling, your rules engine, basically where you do some of the analytics as well. Um, and then you have your client uh, and, and application export services, which is basically your access to the cloud. Um, so on top there, there's, uh, there's uh, quite a lot of changes. I'm going to go over that uh, later on. Um, so on the, on the right side, you see your management uh, layer, uh, which is basically helping to support all of this and make sure that everything that's in your data uh, plane is, uh, is still working. On the other side, you've got your security uh, bit, and that's, uh, that's making sure that, uh, that all of this can be in a, done in a secure way. So how does that, uh, that work? Basically, you can read a temperature of a backnet uh, that will be landed into core data. That core data will then go into the distribution, it will go into your on-prem or enterprise or cloud uh, infrastructure, some analysis on there, and basically it travels back through your rules engine. Uh, it can do some local analysis on this, before it actually goes into the command, and that command can go into the MQTT driver and basically say, okay, we'll stop the machine right there, right? because your temperature is over, uh, over a certain uh, threshold. So since these are all microservices, there's a lot of uh, changes that you can do. For instance, if you need real-time capabilities or you need anything else, uh, you can do that on the fly and basically get that uh, into your uh, platform. Uh, also, this can be distributed, and I'm going to show you how uh, in a little bit later. So this is some of the biggest changes that we've gone over in the, uh, the Fuji release, which has been released uh, actually Monday. Um, so what we're going to do with there is replace uh, the, the top-level services with an SDK-type uh, setup. Uh, where whether you're talking to Azure, Google, uh, AWS, or anything else, uh, you will be able to do that. And you can actually write your own export services there if you uh, wanted to. So here you see some of the tiered deployments that, uh, that are actually uh, uh, real, and, and we're doing this with, uh, with customers at the moment. So on the far left side, you see your field devices, which uh, get all the sensor data uh, over BACnet and, and Zigbee. Um, so basically, you can have some, uh, some rules there uh, to measure some temperature and lightning uh, uh, settings. Uh, there, it can also take some, some other uh, pump and, and uh, camera feeds and feed that into a floor level uh, gateway, uh, which then can do some of the higher level analytics. So that can be communicated to, to a building level uh, device before it actually goes into your, uh, your uh, cloud analytics where it can do some deep learning and, and other mechanisms. Yeah. So really distributed setup and you see that 
whatever you need inside the um, gateway at that level, you can actually house that, but it could also be sensors that actually uh, incorporate some of these services already in these devices, right? So depending what you need, it's sort of uh, distributed. Also, you can divert into different directions to do some local analytics uh, uh, on a data center uh, while you're making decisions at a lower level. So some of the performance targets that we, uh, that we look is, uh, for instance, a Raspberry Pi 3, one gigabyte of RAM, 64 bits uh, CPU with uh, 32 gigabytes of storage space. Um, it should start up within about 10 seconds, depending on the database that you're using. Uh, and the typical latency between the ingest and the actuation should be less than a second. Yeah. Uh, you see here also the Dell gateway uh, and some of its metrics uh, and how that performs in, uh, into a typical setup. So some of the uh, architectural tenets that, uh, that we uh, have, uh, so it should be platform agnostic, right? Uh, any distribution or uh, OS uh, protocols and sensors, it should be able to, uh, to work there. It should be extremely flexible. Um, it should have the store forward uh, capabilities for disconnected uh, devices, um, and it must support facilities to, to, to moving closer to the edge. So everything, your decision making, should be actually happening as close as, to the sensor as possible uh, before it actually uh, gets transferred to, uh, to an upper level uh, due to uh, latency concerns or bandwidth and, and other concerns. Um, it should support uh, green uh, and, uh, and brown uh, device sensors, um, and it should uh, be secure and easily management, manageable. So here's some of the uh, open source technology that are actually used uh, inside uh, Ajax Foundry. Um, so we've refactored, uh, I think, in uh, an early stage, uh, everything from Java uh, to, uh, to Go. Uh, some of the device services are in C and C++. Uh, there's uh, JavaScript involved, um, but we, we can basically work with any language uh, there. Uh, REST API to communicate between the different services. Um, so MongoDB or Redis uh, is, is, is a choice that you can make there. Um, so also the, uh, the message queuing can be, uh, can be different. Um, and we use a lot of other open source technologies like uh, console for the configuration and registry, Kong for the proxy, uh, Jules for the rules engine. So a lot of, a lot of technologies, open source technologies that are uh, built in, into this uh, project. Now, basically what it, it helps you is to prevent you from locking in to, to any of the uh, existing uh, cloud uh, pro providers. Uh, because they, they try to lock you in, and uh, once you're in, you won't be able to get out because you've basically put all your effort in there. Yeah? That's what you want to prevent. Um, it needs to uh, enable an, a secure and manageable solution. Um, basically, you can certify components. Uh, we're working hard to get uh, that, uh, that uh, to, uh, to a more mature setup. Um, it helps you to, to get all that protocol soup sort of manageable uh, in, a, in a good sense. Um, and because it's part of the LFH uh, 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 initiative, it's, it's, it's very open and it can interact with a lot of other ecosystem uh, partners. Um, and it helps you to, to digital transformation uh, in, in that sense that you can do a multi-cloud solution uh, with this product uh, as uh, you prevent that, uh, that uh, lock-in there. So, as I said, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, traction since 2000, uh, the start of 2019, where we basically became part of uh, LF Edge. Um, and with that, it helps to have sort of a focus on everything that's happening in the, uh, in the edge, uh, which was previously IoT. Delgate got away uh, from that. Um, so 
what you see is that the uh, total marketing capital which uh, which is in there is about uh, 300 uh, trillion uh, dollar uh, and the funding in total of this uh, project is uh, close to uh, uh, one trillion uh, in total so it's it's heavily funded uh, the, the whole elevage uh, setup so here are some of the uh, the members that are part of the elevage uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, you see all the big names in there, um, and it's uh, it's it's a good foundation to actually get this uh, this support from that uh, that ecosystem. Same goes for the uh, L uh, the Edgex Foundry uh, community, which uh, is uh, you see here. Um, there's a lot of big names that uh, that are in that ecosystem and all support the. Uh, the growing ecosystem uh, of, uh, of Edgex Foundry. Now, how successful is that? Um, it's, it's, it's really successful. Um, actually, if you see the, uh, the rise of contributions and uh, the downloads um, of, of, for instance, the Docker containers that, uh, that are associated uh, with this, uh, you see a, a huge uh, increase uh, happening. Um, actually, this Monday, uh, we reached 1 million uh, downloads, which is, uh, which is insane. It's, it's going really fast, and uh, we're getting really excited about, uh, about all of this. Uh, so you see a lot of traction. So if you want to engage, uh, basically, uh, it's, a, it's a meritocracy. Uh, anyone can, uh, can contribute and, and be part of this, uh, this ecosystem. Um, there's a technical steering committee and a working group. I'm going over a little bit of that uh, in my next slide. Um, so there's chairs in, in there. Um, if you want to contribute, here's uh, some of the uh, 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 GitHub repositories where you uh, can go. Uh, actually, download the code, and uh, by basically that command, that the wget command, you can start uh, directly uh, testing it. Uh, and check it and, and see if your APIs are, uh, are running. Um, I have a video uh, which, which shows how to do that. It's, it's literally uh, minutes to, uh, to set you up and uh, have something and, and have some data running. Um, also, we have a, a snap uh, from uh, some of the people at uh, Canonical that actually supported us in, in this, uh, which is a bliss to actually start, uh, start installing that. So if you want to contribute or, or get engaged with that, um, I will make these slides available. I haven't been able to do that because there was some confidential uh, information in that uh, because of some of the announcements that we're making. But uh, I will make these available uh, for sure to you. So how is the steering committee uh, set up? So basically it's, uh, it's, it's governed by, uh, by uh, Jim White and uh, Keith Steele. Uh, both of them uh, currently working at IOTech. Uh, unfortunately, Jim White left us uh, at Dell and he's going to uh, uh, work for IOTech, which doesn't mean anything for the project because he's still going to be in this, uh, this ecosystem. Um, so from the Dell side, we have uh, Trevor Kahn, who's uh, part of the core working group. Um, so we have uh, people from uh, VMware, people from Intel, uh, all in this, uh, this ecosystem. So it's, it's, it's a pretty good, uh, good setup that we have on, on, in terms of the governance. Uh, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger, uh, so I won't be able to uh, attend uh, any of these sessions uh, anymore uh, because it's, it's just too, getting too big. So. Um, so in June, we released the 1.0 version, which was the Edinburgh uh, version. It was uh, basically a, a result of the, uh, all the work that has been done in, in Edinburgh in the UK in uh, 2018. Um, so improve the onboarding. Uh, we're going to have some, some different binary data for, uh, support. Um, automate some of the performance testing that we needed to do, because that, uh, that was uh, difficult. Um, we added many device uh, services to the uh, setup, uh, and the application service uh, was uh, was more scalable. But yeah, as you know, we're gonna gonna change that now. Uh, so we refactor all the database uh, setup, and uh, the um, certification program was uh, was outlined. So it wasn't completed; it was outlined. So. 
This week, we released uh, the, um, the Fuji release, uh, and basically it had all the uh, ingredients in there to, uh, to make it uh, more performant, uh, also make it measurable in, in performance, um, improve some of the security, and include better PKI management in the uh, services, uh, the store and forward uh, capabilities, um, so a lot of work also on, on hardening uh, the services and the SDK because that was uh, needed. Uh, and the, uh, the Edgex marketing work group, uh, which was uh, uh, basically lost because the uh, LF Edge initiative uh, was formed. So that was picked up again. Um, so for 2020, what we're targeting is actually getting uh, the third party certification uh, 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 completed. Uh, that uh, is, is important to, to actually get, uh, get uh, that, that X mark onto uh, all of these uh, co different components uh, from various people. Um, work on some of the, uh, the, the, the setup guidance and uh, uh, some of the performance uh, measures. Uh, and what we're going to address is also one of the uh, initial ask that was asked to me uh, last year in, uh, in Edinburgh is uh, high availability concerns, uh, specifically in, in uh, getting, getting uh, east and west uh, support for, uh, for this uh, project is, uh, is one of the, the biggest asks. So we're going to attach that in, in the uh, 2020 release. So some of the use cases that, uh, that are actually happening uh, you see here. Um, so we have dev kits uh, and the physical architecture you see here uh, with the Raspberry Pi and some of the growth material. Um, so what was done here is actually incorporate uh, MQTT broker uh, and, and Node-RED to actually uh, dashboard all of this, but also do some of the, the logic uh, here to get it uh, onto a web browser and uh, actually manage what uh, some of the sensors that were associated with this. So if you want to uh, have a look at how that's done, the link is uh, under there, and you see how that fits into the uh, small picture there, where basically the analytics uh, part is being exchanged by, uh, by Node-RED. Very cool setup. Um, so with all of these technologies and open source uh, initiatives, uh, what we see is that there was uh, an ask to actually incorporate more stuff into this, and that was our uh, internal project, Magnolia, uh, where we wanted to have also the RSA agent uh, and, and some of the Redis uh, code included into uh, the whole architecture, uh, and have a different OS on there, which was the Photon OS from VMware running. So, with the people from IOTech, uh, we now have uh, commercial support for, uh, for these uh, types of uh, setups, and we're being pretty successful in, in larger POCs, uh, with, uh, specifically in EMEA, with, uh, with customers uh, that, uh, that actually are doing works with multi-clouds and, and getting all of these uh, device services in there. So uh, if you want to do this at scale, yeah, you see that, that you need professional support on that. Uh, if you're a smaller company, uh, but also if you, if you want to use all of these technologies uh, together, it can be uh, somewhat overwhelming. So uh, IOTech can, uh, can help there, as well as VMware, which is uh, also uh, within the Photon OS shipping Edgex Foundry uh, at the moment. So uh, that, that's pretty good, uh, good initiatives. So, in October uh, this year, uh, we had a hackathon in, uh, in Chicago, and that was a, a big success. Uh, basically, it was around um, some of the retail initiatives that are currently going on. Uh, some of the use cases were advanced loss protection, uh, some of the personalized retail experience that, uh, that you can do. Uh, but also inventory management, uh, for instance, with handhelds and, and drones. Uh, and there was an open category with, uh, with, which needed to have that same uh, retail-centric uh, use uh, cases. So uh, we had four teams in there. Uh, I wasn't 
present, so I needed to get uh, most of this uh, from the media. I haven't been able to speak to, uh, to anyone uh, there yet. Um, the team from uh, Volteo won that. Uh, they got a check from 5,000 euros. Uh, and you see here that uh, they, got, uh, they got that check uh, handed after two days of hard work uh, and uh, bringing that uh, to, uh, to success. What they did is they used camera ingest to actually get, uh, get that uh, whole uh, setup uh, initialized. Uh, we're planning to do uh, a manufacturing uh, hackathon in EMEA. Uh, in the spring of 2020, uh, that's going to be right before some of the uh, the new releases of uh, of Agix, uh, and it's it's going to be probably around the Hanover Messe. Uh, so if you want to uh, compete with uh, with other contestants there, uh, that might uh, be a good uh, good way of uh, of doing that. Um, the location is not yet set. It might be in France, it might be in Germany, uh, it might even be somewhere completely different, but uh, we're still uh, looking at that at the moment. So, some of the other exciting news this week was uh, Project uh, Alvarium. And Project Alvarium is basically, and you've seen that in uh, the uh, presentations in the keynotes uh, this, uh, this week, uh, the concern of where's my data coming from and how trustworthy is that, uh, that data. So Project Alvarium is actually addressing that need for the industrial space. Um, there's a session later on today and I'm going over what, uh, what it's all about. Uh, but basically what, what we've created is a proof of concept for a data confident fabric. And the data confident fabric will help you together with uh, a little bit of blockchain and a little bit of uh, TPMs and, and all of that, uh, to formalize uh, a setup which basically allows you with open source technology to bring all of that goodness on trust into a score mechanism where you can basically see, okay, if it's gone through all of these systems, then how trustworthy is this data when I'm actually looking at it? because that's becoming increasingly important. You saw the picture, right, of, of the, 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 the mouse that actually, with some noise, can en enter into, uh, for AI, uh, a, a monkey. Now, with this, you could prevent that. And uh, it, it will do some, some, some things which, for instance, for digital cinema is there for years, uh, but now it actually uh, becomes uh, relevant also in an industrial space, which, uh, which we'll look at here. So it's a collection of uh, various trust insertion technologies that actually bring this all to, uh, to open source. Um, so it looks at the, the wider system uh, and it, uh, it's... Uh, it uses all these different technologies under the LFH umbrella. So it's, it's actually nothing new, but it brings all these technologies together and uh, makes uh, uh, that, uh, that proof of concept. And it's sort of a working method on how you would do things. So here's some of the uh, initiatives, the open source uh, trust insertion technologies and, and how that actually will equate into uh, bringing all of this uh, together. And it's, uh, it's actually really cool to see also Agix Foundry being part of that, uh, that whole setup. So um, why is it in LF Edge? Uh, the reason for this is that all, crea uh, all data is created at the edge. Right? So that's where you need to, to actually have that, uh, that sourced. Um, and you see all of these other uh, incentives coming into that, uh, that technology, CNCF, Elevant Networking. Um, so it's, it's unifying it, it's not reinventing uh, all of this. So if you want to know more about this, uh, there's uh, some other sessions later on uh, today. Um, you see that uh, Trevor Khan, uh, one of the senior staff members and director for, for Dell Technologies uh, will have a session at uh, 4.15. Uh, 
uh, on how this is all being done. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive. We, we used a lot of Dell technologies, VMware technologies, uh, Boomi, to actually get it uh, to get this done. And uh, yeah. So also some of the other team members from, uh, for instance, from VMware, uh, you see here. And uh, yeah, I encourage you to, uh, to look at these other sessions uh, later on today. Thank you very much.